my ship's on shore, it's running around, the rudder's lost and can't be found. Do you know how much it makes me want to cry? You made me cry. Original tunes with honky tonk grit from Pushing Chain. Every rock is different, and so it says something different from the beginning. I love creating. Jewelry artist Michelle Ronning mines treasures from the shore, and publisher Jim Perlman prints poetry for the soul. I think it helps to go beyond what you think your limits are. These artists and more are in queue for your playlist. Funding for The Playlist is provided by the citizens of Minnesota through the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. Well, they're an Americana duo bridging genres and having harmonies that go to the heart. Please welcome Pushing Chain to the stage. Same damn singer that's singing this song. Of course, we're holding hearts. Time to fold them. Here we go again. I could be your lover, oh, but I wouldn't want to be your man. I'm walking tight ropes and fine lines again. Yeah. I'm walking tight ropes and fine lines again. She got more hooks than a tackle box. I think she's hoping that I get caught. She wants to take me home and clean me up. But let me fill up a little box. Hey, I could be her lover. Oh, but I wouldn't want to be her man. I'm walking tight ropes and fine lines again. Yes, I'm walking tight ropes. And find lines again. Thank you. Pray 
primarily I wanted a little treasure from the lake. Oh, pretty rock, but gotta leave it for someone else. <laughs> then, then the addiction started. You know, you go to the beach, oh, there's a nice rock, oh, but there's another nice rock. And then I had all these rocks and I started buying equipment and it just became sort of creative play. So what I'm looking for are the blackest black. Typically, the darker ones are harder. That might be a nice one there. I'm Michelle Ronning. I am a jewelry artist. I make jewelry out of beach stones, metals, natural stones, and I live in Two Harbors, Minnesota. These are some of my favorite shapes. I like this. Score. We'll call that a score. And a score is, wow, I can really do something cool with this piece. And then sometimes if I get tired, I just make it up. Oh, that's a score. And then I have to make something new. <laughs> so. I usually start by touching them and feel them and sort of like, you know, is it? That's uh, kind of thick, but... And then I, I often will do a bunch of drilling. Okay, one rule for sure is use clean water. Because once I get the water cloudy, then as I'm drilling, I can't see the center. There we go. A kind of matching set. Every rock is different, and so it says something different from the beginning. And if I just pay attention, and I don't always, but I'm learning, then, then I know when to stop. And then I get to a point where I get nervous, then I'm going to break it. So I do this little balancing thing. The most rewarding, when I come up with something unique, different than something I've done. Originally, that was every piece, <laughs> but now it's uh, looking at something differently and coming up with something that I haven't come up with before. And there we go, a pair. So a little movement, that's nice. Recycling is really important to me. Um, using things that are found naturally or reusing things. I love creating. This one's too thin. Usually I just look at a stone like that and that's a skipper. Ultimately, my most favorite part is when I see somebody else wearing my jewelry. And I'm so honored and so thrilled. And I hope, hope that they're enjoying it. So that's, that's the best. <laughs>
not an easy thing to, to no. stake your claim in. Poetry has a loyal and intense following, but it's a small one. You also, as Holy Cow, have put together some beautiful anthologies, and Thank some you. of them are poetry books and, and around themes. How do you d decide what theme you want to go with and who gets in? Well, um, I've been lucky to be the co-editor along with three other Duluthians of anthologies that we've worked on together over the past few years. What, what kind of arm wrestling goes into, okay, no, I really like this one, no, I, but I like this one better. I mean, Well, how... truthfully, there is some give and take, but I've had the experience where, um, by and large, we agree almost unanimously on the choices that we make. And in our editing progress or process, I think if one of us can make a good argument why something should be in or out, we're all open-hearted enough to listen. The next anthology we're working on, the four of us, is a collection of poems about Lake Superior. How did you pick Lake Superior as a theme? And then how competitive is that gonna to be to get in? Actually, Deborah Cooper um, had a really strong feeling that this was a good idea. And doing the research before we started, I found that um, an anthology has never been assembled on our greatest of Great Lakes before. So we put out an open call for submissions and received 300 poems. And in the last couple of months, we met and discussed and chose 70 poems that'll be published in the anthology in August. It's called Amethyst and Agate, Poems of Lake Superior. So there's another book, a poetry book, on your uh, list, the five that are on your list for this year, uh, <laughs> that, that features uh, the poems of Afghan women. Yes. So what's the backstory on that and how powerful? Well, one of the writers in our home anthology is a woman named Farzana Marie, who is a PhD student in Middle Eastern Studies at the University of Arizona also spent four years in the armed forces, two of which she, she served in Afghanistan. And during her time there, she made connections with the local literary community, especially the women's community. And she came up with the idea of putting together an anthology of eight contemporary Afghan women poets, which she translated from the original Persian to have a book of Afghan poems published by a Duluth publisher. Right. I think that's a very interesting combination. <laughs> yes, it's way out of the box for me, but I think it helps to um, go beyond what you think your limits are. So I'm really honored to be the publisher of this groundbreaking um, book, and really none of the poems have been translated into English previously, so I think people will find it very interesting. What is the best way to keep in touch with Holy Cow? Well, we have a website, www.holycowpress.org. And um, in there you can find our recently published books and how to contact the press if you're a writer seeking a publisher, our email, our mailing address. Um, so that would be the primary site. You may be flooded, Jim. Thank you. I, understand that that would probably happen. <laughs> well, thank you very much and congratulations on your success. Thank you, Karen. It's a tune about earwigs. I figured all the love songs had been written. <laughs> Here we go. One, two, three, go. <laughs> Following my future and my past 
earwig gently chewing Driving me insane Turning on my memories to fries No, I can't stop them No, I can't stop them No, they won't stop Stop them. The earwigs find a way to get into my brain while I'm sleeping. No matter how hard I try, no matter what I say, into my head, earwigs always creep. stop them No, I can't stop them No, they won't stop Boyd Blomberg and Adam Moe, welcome to the playlist. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for playing for us Thank tonight. you for the opportunity. It was a lot of fun. It was fun. Lots Thanks for having fun. us. So tell me how Pushing Chain came together, the two of you. Uh, let's see. I owned a house in Grand Marais, and he lived across the street. And we'd heard maybe we should get together and play, some other people told us. And so we did. 1998, this yeah. is. It's 97, 98, something and like then, that. And uh, then we played together up here in Cook County. Uh, and we go down the cities every once in a while in Duluth um, and played f quite a bit for three, four years. And then Adam and his wife moved to Chicago, Illinois for 10 years. And Adam grew up in Cook County. His parents live here. And so he would come back. We get a chance yeah. to play 20, 25 times a year. But uh, Adam and his wife moved back to Duluth uh, three, four years ago now. And you started hitting it hard. Really hitting it. So. So um, will you describe your sound for me? Ooh, it's a tough one. Well, I like falling under the umbrage of folk music, but uh, we've been uh, calling ourselves uh, Folky Tonk. I like that one. Yeah, I made that. I want to trademark that one, Folky Tonk. And, uh, you know, it's Americana, which sometimes can connote drums and a bass player, though when we tour, uh, mostly for the economics of things, we go out as a duo. Every once in a while, uh, down the Twin Cities, we'll play uh, full band shows. But. And Boyd, describe what Adam brings to this duo. <laughs> uh, he is an amazing harmony singer. 
He's one of the most talented people I know across the board in a lot of different disciplines. He is. Uh, he shucks. Is. <laughs> he is. Not just music, I mean, he's super creative. And uh, he also is an ear player, so everything that he does is by ear, and his ear is fabulous. Fabulous. And uh, our brother Harmonies is the thing I like. Adam, you have the same question. Describe Boyd. Um, since we've started playing again, I would say the songwriting has been really good. Um, and the, it, it, just, just our, uh, the ability to work together with him, I, we just think alike. What kind of chemistry comes from playing that many reps? We've been playing so long, you know, we're up to, I don't know, 1,500 gigs together, I'd Probably imagine. something like that. 1,500, a couple thousand, a lot, we've played together. <laughs> And so it's, we don't barely raise an eyebrow, Eddie, you know, because we'll just know. And we get along well. We spend a lot of time in the car. A lot of times we don't even turn the radio on. A lot of windshield time. Way. Yeah, you know, so it's fun. Two last questions. Where does the name come from, Pushing Chain? That was something that I've heard my grandfather and my father say. Um, it, it's sort of like the myth of Sisyphus. It's doing a lot of work, but with very little result. Saying a futility. It's a saying of futility, and I thought it kind of fit. Yeah, it fits with our self-deprecating stoic Scandinavian well. thing, right? So I'm going to get you to flip it on its head, though. What's the future hold, or what are you hoping for with Pushing Chain? Well, there's got to be a, ra a way to travel the great highways and byways of this country and over to Europe and make a living doing it, and that's what we're trying to do. Keep writing. a can't deny a good song. Hopefully, we're going to continue to try to write some and play them for as many people as we can. And um, it'd be pretty neat for people to say, what do you do? And you can say, I'm a musician. And not say, I'm a musician sometimes, and then other times I'm this other thing. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. That would be great. <laughs> right. Um, so We're I guess that's always there. in the back of your head. And another recording in the works? Yes. 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 We have the songs. Uh, we're in pre-production right now, and hopefully end it's, of May, yeah. June, we're going to be going down to Austin, Texas. And it's looking like Texas. So lots of fun. Yeah. Lots of fun. Bright, bright stars in front of you. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you Thanks for, for having taking us, the time. Really. You bet. Good luck. Thank you. Yeah. This is one I wrote recently. It's called uh, Lucky You, Lucky Him. Leaf clover, the sheets sit and think it over. Your fortune silhouetted by the skies. Now my ship's on shore, it's run aground. The rudder's lost and can't be found. Do you know how much it makes me wanna cry? You made me cry. Oh, lucky you, yeah, lucky him. It mean I'm lonesome. Oh, I'm lonesome once again So lucky you Yeah, lucky him That's why I'm lonesome And lucky you, lucky him The middle facts unfurl inside a river Poor notion with no time for long goodbyes But instead of being bitter I would hope you'd reconsider And you know how much it makes me wanna cry You made me cry Oh, lucky you Yeah, and lucky him It mean I'm lonesome Oh, I'm lonesome once again so lucky you, yeah, and lucky him. That's why I'm lonesome, and then lucky you, lucky him. Well, you know I've seen the pictures, I don't want to see the pictures on the wall. It seemed the minute I looked down, well, another came around with him, she gone. Yeah, now she's gone Oh, lucky you Yeah, lucky him It mean 
I'm lonesome. Oh, I'm lonesome once again. So lucky you, yeah, lucky him. That's why I'm lonesome. And lucky you, lucky him. Thank you very much, really. Thanks a lot. You can find out all the blah blah pushandchain.com. Thank you. Thanks a lot.